Hey guys, Mike here. So today we're going to go over all your questions and comments and definitely have some good ones this week. The first one is definitely the question of the year so far. So I appreciate that one. So I'll delve deep into that one. Also, we'll go over, you know, where to get the economic data for the week coming out, what this Apple investigation means. Uh, also, you guys are asking about triple levered ETFs. If you had a little money, where you know, if I had some, where would I actually put it or whatever? Uh, and then a few others on top of it. So as usual, I don't want this to be too long. So let's get right into this. And the first one I ask here, what three things do you believe are most important to know about the market or better put, what three things do you think your son needs to know about the market when he gets old enough to invest? Which will be a while because he's only eight right now. But I love this question. By far question of the year so far. And there's three main things. If I had to pick any of them, it would be one, that the market is not the economy. The economy is not the market. And two, right here, liquidity. Liquidity is king in any market. This is on a global scale as well. But when you look at this, it's the S&P laid over what will be what I consider liquidity, which is like the Fed's balance sheet, the treasury account, uh, and the reverse repo program. And when you look at this, you can see when it's going up, the market's going up. When it's going down, the market's either trading sideways or going down normally. Okay, this is how it works. And that's why, for example, to show how important liquidity is, in 2020, when we shut down not only this country, most of the world was shut down, the market was going crazy, right? Even though companies weren't making hardly any money, it matter because they pumped like trillions of dollars into the system all right then it came down liquidity came down market came down liquidity goes back up and stays steady market goes to the moon not only that financial conditions you can get this for free federal reserve bank of chicago it tells you if financial conditions are loosening tightening or just stable right right now they're still loosening okay you go down you get a little chart if the graph, if that thing is going up, it means financial conditions are tightening, which means the market, I bet you money is probably going down or sideways. And then if you look when it's going down, that means it's loosening. The market's probably going up for sure. And I believe this is so important, honestly, and it's something I never looked at until a few years ago, that, I mean, even in the morning news brief, this is in there, Monday through Friday. You go on the bottom, update this weekly right here. You get it once a week. And so... That's what you need to know, whether it's tightening or loosening. Back in when we were crashing, it was tightening, all right? So it made sense. And so that's why it's part of it. That's why I believe in it. Now, also, I mean, I believe in sentiment and breath and everything else on top of that. But the third thing I would absolutely put in here is going to be how the market moves. It is nothing but liquidity grab. That's all these algos are doing, these computer-based programs and stuff, and they're running this. All they're doing is either looking for double tops, double bottoms to take out, and these fair value gaps, right? These imbalances between buys and sells, I've talked about a million different times. You don't know what they are, please look them up. And you can see, and when this comes up, you'll say, oh wow, why did it stop there and start to sell back off? Well, because it probably came up an imbalance, mitigated it, and then came back down. It got its liquidity grab, that's what it's looking for. All right, and so when you look at this, some people will look at this as like external liquidity, internal liquidity, that's another one one of our members was talking about, and it makes total sense when you think about it. Well, but when you look at it, you can just see there's a huge fair value gap. This is a very fast move down, right? Very fast displacement down. What's it do? It comes back up in there, starts to mitigate that one, and then sells back down. There's another fair value gap, comes back up into it, boom, sells back down, right? And so this is just a repeating occurrence over and over and over. So understand what truly, truly drives the market, because there's, there's those days where you go, I don't understand why the market's going up. Well, because it came down, pulled liquidity, and started moving up. There's orders of the field and everything. So that's why it's still moving up because liquidity looks good because financial conditions are loosening, right? Breath is broadening, all this stuff. That's what moves markets. Not, oh my God, look at this company. It reported earnings and missed top and bottom line. How many times have we seen in the last like six earnings cycles here where a company's missed both top and bottom, takes a 15% hit, and in three days is recovered and it's already moving back up green, right? And so keep that in mind. Now, the next one right here says, and before we continue, guys, you can please hit that thumbs up down at the bottom right there, that like button. It helps people find the video. And think about subscribing if you like this kind of content. And so this is the one about the leverage ETFs, and I like it. I know asking about leverage ETFs can be taboo for some people, but if you had some, let's call it mad cash to blow, which one would you look at taking a risk on? No pressure, LOL. You know, there's a few to look at. I mean, they're pretty popular, and especially when you're talking about going into like the fourth quarter and things like that, where we know we usually get a really big move up and stuff because a lot of these are already up. But like a TQQQ, you know, that, that would be a good one. I mean, you can see it had that huge sell down right there from like 
September through October, or actually July through October. And then, you know, just absolutely start to take off like crazy. And these move like crazy. You got to be careful with leverage ETFs, obviously. But this would be one I'll be looking at for sure. I think another one would be looking at probably Soxel. This is your semiconductors. And so it hasn't had a decent pullback or whatever. But this is another one. Uh, keep on your radar. And you want to get these on pullbacks. Now, you know, that's just how I am. I don't like chasing uh, when they're going parabolic and stuff. Uh, another one is going to be fast. This is one, if you're looking at rate cuts and stuff, the Direction Financial Bull 3X Levered ETF. And you can see it's kind of an inverse relationship here. You can see, I mean, they're raising rates here. It's going sideways or down. They pause. You get the pause rally in this thing. Huge move up over 100%. Then they cut and you get another huge pop up. And then, of course, we shut down the world right there. And you can see, though, we put rates down to zero and this thing just went, see you later, to the moon, right? Up over 400% in a very short amount of time. So our raising rates, what happened? Crashed and burned, went sideways. we got the pause rally going on now. And so we'll see what happens when they cut. So this is something I'd be looking at as well. Another one uh, is going to be TNA, obviously, small caps. This is the 3X leverage ETF for them. I know a lot of people are into this one. I think I've started buying this thing like 25 or 6 or whatever it was. I told members about it. But, you know, that's, that's what a lot of people are in. Because, I mean, this thing, if, you know, Tom Lee's right, like that's going to be a huge gainer, right? Uh, another one, the last one's going to be nail. Uh, you know, the real estate is kind of like an inverse relationship with the, the rates as well sometimes. But, you know, this is another one that's already ran a lot. So I definitely, definitely would wait for a pullback if I was ever going to get into this thing. But again, for the future reference, you know, during rate cycles, you can see when they're usually raising rates, it's not, it doesn't do too great. And then when they pause and cut, it goes to the moon or whatever. And you can see like they right here it come crashing down when they start raising rates, started to recover, they pause and boom, this thing goes to the moon, which is where it's at now. So again, I'm not saying this is something I would do right now, but you know, just looking at future reference for this one, this is kind of an inverse relationship. So that's that's the ones I would probably keep the most eye on. Put in the bottom, uh, which ones you like, guys, if you if you get into any of those. Uh, next one here says, what website do you use for the upcoming economic data? I put out usually every Sunday and then update on a daily basis. I use two. Uh, one for the videos, which is Trading View Economic Calendar because it's easier to see for the videos. And then for the Discord, the members, uh, I use this one right here. You can get it off Forex Factory right there. And there's a calendar. It's just easy. It'll, it'll snapshot. You can go through the filters, put on here what you want. But I can get one little snapshot to upload to the Discord and the Patreon for these guys. I uh, hope that helps. Now, Dr. Marcus says, hey, Mike, great video as always. Just wanted to clarify something, hoping you explain a bit more. You mentioned BA is not tanking in price because the government accounts for 37% of the revenue, et cetera. I don't understand how that would have anything to do with the stock price. Wouldn't the government involvement only affect the stock price if the government actually bought a crap ton of shares of the stock? It really shouldn't and wouldn't matter where or who accounts for a company's revenue. Am I missing something? Bottom line, if government buys their planes, that should have no effect on the stock price unless they're buying shares. And let's think about this in a couple of different ways. One, the government makes up 30% of the revenue, right? So earnings, right? So that, that would be a whole lot of earnings lost if the government decided to cut the defense budget and everything, right? So that would affect the stock price. But the other one is, yeah, what I'm saying is it's more of an insulated company because it has a huge moat. Or what do I mean by this, okay? Look right here. Not only is it only one of two major people that make the passenger airplanes, they're also the fifth largest defense contractor for the world, actually, not just here in the United States. And so, you know, it's it, it's a big deal. I mean, that's a lot of orders, right? That's the contract obligation, $15 billion. Okay, so now they, they're building passenger planes and do some other things. They're in, they're in huge in the defense industry. Okay, and what do we do here in America? We keep increasing our defense budget. Okay, and then when you look at this, huge employer, 170,000 employees. Uh, these are not poor paying jobs. And so that's another thing. So big employer uh, with good wages, right? What else usually happens? Every time there's something bad, I showed you all those news articles, one after the other, coming out about them, right? Something happens, some incident doing something. What happens? Oh, no problem. Here, we'll go ahead and actually upgrade a contract for the Navy, $1.3 billion, right? After all that, it seems to always be a pattern. I swear I keep seeing this with Boeing, right? I understand. I'm not saying anything bad about the company. For God's sakes, though, you know, we've all heard the stories about the airplanes when they come to military and stuff and how they're like, can you please fix these because these are a mess? It's not just the passenger airplanes that they make. And so when the military gets these, they're like, please fix this mess. But the other way to look at this is, do you know any other company? Imagine if uh, Apple, who's the one of the largest company in the world, if not the largest, right? Or a Tesla or something. Imagine if, if Apple iPhones started catching on fire when people used them, right? I mean, at a rapid pace, right? 
when you look at uh, if car uh, doors and tires start flying off Tesla's cars or Ford or GM's cars, right? What do you think would happen to that stock price? I mean, there's no way it would recover. It, it would just be so far down so fast. But with Boeing, investors know. They're like, when I'm, you know, that much percentage of revenue comes from the government, right? And what does our government love to do? Love to spend, right? Love to spend. Plus, they know they need them. Can you imagine? Just picture this. What would happen if Boeing was treating like a regular company? The stock would be down way more than it is. And have you seen the chart, how fast it recovers? I mean, it goes on these crazy like tech light runs, right? It recovers very fast when it does these sell-offs for a reason. Because they know the country, we can't live without Boeing, right? We need passenger airplanes. We already have a shortage of them. Can you imagine if something happened to Boeing, right? They're the fifth largest contractor, defense contractor. Imagine having to fill all those billions of dollars in the order. It's already hard enough to get them to, to complete their job. It takes years for some of those contracts to get complete. Imagine if we lost the fifth largest one in the world, how far back that would be. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. When I said, yeah, they don't, government doesn't buy the shares outright, but investors know that they're always going to be there for them. Right? And if they're ever hurting, the government's going to be like, here you go, Bowen. here's another contract, big dog. Appreciate that. They'll come up with something, right? Because they can't live without the company. That's what I'm saying. When you look at the chart, you don't see it. It has this, like, this range. It does, oh, something bad happened. Well, never mind. Let's go ahead and award your contract. And it just recovers so fast. Other companies don't have that, and they would not at all recover like that if something like that was happening so that that's my point on it so a lot of people may disagree with that but that's that's what i'm seeing anyway so let me know what you think about that now next one says i'm fairly new to the stock market and a member of the seeking alpha a lot of the earnings estimate i see for the next quarter is lower than the previous quarter do you think we are going into a slowdown what is your opinion the only thing i'll say this when it comes to analysts there's been many kind of research done on this and i love this one right here which is this was march 7 2024 um, and it said one study looked at the track record of the stock market experts who predicted the market's direction. Their findings were eye popping. Overall, their accuracy rate was only 47% less than you might expect from random chances. Jim Cramer, a fixture on CNBC, had an accuracy rating of 46.8. And, and when it comes to earnings, just look at how many companies have missed by a country mile, made by a country mile. I mean, it just blew them away. Like, they weren't even close, right? So I wouldn't so much put a whole lot of weight on that and yes i mean is the economy under these interest rates for a lot of companies slowing down yeah you can pretty much see it right it, it's happening there's no doubt about that but for the big conglomerates the ones with the highest weights that can continue to carry the market and stuff you know it's it's just a different ball game you're seeing like small caps a lot of the small caps their earnings aren't that great at all right but the stocks are up huge okay because you learn remember it, earnings mean something when the, when the market cares about it, right? And again, how many times have you seen 30% drop on earnings and literally recover, you know, within a few weeks, like back up to where it was or something? It's crazy, or a few months. Like, it's nuts. But, and so, you know, is there a slowdown? I mean, under these kind of conditions, probably. Yeah, for a lot of companies, there are. But you can still see the market going up just because these indexes have weights to these stocks, right? So look at it, that and pay more attention to it. Uh, the next you say, and now obviously if you're in these stocks, you would want to pay attention and say, oh man, there's a forecast coming down for my company. What are we selling? Are we selling Nike shoes, right? Are we like FedEx and we miss our sales forecast, but we say we're buying back shares, right? I mean, we, you know, there's different ways to look at this. So yeah, analysts, I don't pay attention to too many analysts. I'll be honest with you. So let me know what you think about that guys. Now, uh, next one says, and it's obviously a very popular opinion. There's a lot of comments on this right here. But the Justice Department investigation to Apple is deliberate market manipulation, gives the corrupt politicians and their cronies an opportunity to load up on calls cheaply. I can see that. And then sue for share the wealth with Washington. That's also referring to Apple. And if you know what they're talking about, if you're just new to this country or whatever and the way this country works, I will say this. iPhone does have a huge market share in the U.S., 58%. That does not make it a monopoly, by the way. All right. And of course, you know, it's very popular here. But... When it comes to handing out the money, right? I think Apple is starting to learn their lesson. They were dead last when it comes to the math. Like these big companies like this right here, in 2021, they only paid $6.5 million. That is a sin, okay? Politicians do not like that. Now, Apple got smart, all right? They did the same thing Tesla did. They finally smartened up and realized how the system works. They increased their lobbying by 44% to $9.4 million. Now, of course, they can't outdo Meta or Amazon. Those folks, those, those companies right there, pay a boatload of money to these politicians 
And again, for people who are unfamiliar the way our political system works, and let me know if you're across the pond or in Australia or wherever, if your system works this way, but as you slide over legally a check to not the politician themselves, but their PAC or their aide or whoever it is, you know, to go towards their leadership PAC or, you know, for their next re-election or something, you tend to get bills passed in your favor or investigations just all of a sudden go away, right? Are you, you know, like Nancy Pelosi is famous for buying or telling her husband what to buy, and then all of a sudden a stock will boom because they got a government contract or an investigation disappeared or an investigation to the rivals happened, hmm, which will help them. That's just how the system works. That's why, you know, I've always griped about all oh, wants a level playing field. I don't want any free money for anybody or anything else, but it drives me nuts that this is why you see companies of 500 or less employees, smaller companies, getting ate up by these larger companies right here, these conglomerates, all right, because smaller companies just can't afford to go pay the politicians legally. That's the way it works. Their paychecks are not enough, okay? And so that's that's the way it works here, and Apple's getting smarter, right? Again, I did a whole video on Tesla. Tesla was around for a long time, but until they got in the game, right, and started writing checks, so Elon had to start writing checks to put not only in the federal level, the state, all these different states. Hey, 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 come on, baby. All right, help them get reelected and all this stuff. You know, uh, what is it? Money to play or pay money to play or some? There's some saying out there I can't remember right now, but you know that's the way it is. So pay to play. There we go. That's what I'm thinking of. Got to pay to play. So you know, we'll see how this investigation wink wink goes. And if they're gonna break up Apple, <laughs> you know, but it, it'll be fun to watch anyway to see what happens. So anyway, hope you guys got some out of it. Let me know what you think down in the comments and stuff. Please hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. Feel free to leave any more questions for next Saturday's video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow to set up the week.